Dr. Nair, let me come back to you. Talking about the human race, talking about humanity, management, talent management. How is this done from home suddenly? Because I don't think that chapter was being equipped for, right? Yeah, that definitely wasn't. And in fact, you know, for um, I think for many, many years, people have been talking about, you know, how you need to revisit structures around work, arrangements around work. You know, for years, we've been talking about things like uh, flexi and job sharing and telecommuting. But I don't think it has taken on, caught on to this level. Even education, if you take, or even uh, higher education for that, for that matter, right? We always assume that you have to have face-to-face -face training, you have to be sitting there and all of that. And yes, in an ideal world, that, that's the best scenario. But now with COVID, we are forced to do that, right? We're forced to do that. And as Frederick pointed out, we're not always prepared, right? Uh, you can't just take a class that you've been teaching to 200 people in a lecture hall and put that online and expect that it's going to go the same way. It's not, you know. Uh, the the challenge, though, is that that's the challenge. Challenge is many of us are not prepared, right? How many teachers, I mean, you take even uh, India, big countries like that, even Malaysia for that matter, 10,000 schools, 400,000 teachers, uh, you know, excluding university lecturers, right? Uh, and then, of course, office workers. Those in industry, I think, can learn to adapt a little bit quicker because uh, especially if you're from the private sector, you're more used to changing environments and you can adapt a little better. Those that had already started uh, embarking on their digital transformation journeys, what we have observed in Malaysia at least is they have been less impacted. The ones that have been most impacted are those that were resisting that change and were all this while saying, you know, we don't need to do it, you can't do it, it's not going to happen. They now have been impacted. So there's a there's a sort of a race, you know, to try and, and address these gaps, to retrain people, you know, uh, trying to figure out how do you deliver a lot of services that you uh, previously were doing uh, offline? How do you now deliver that uh, online? So a lot of those kind of thinking happening. But I must say we are probably far from figuring things out. Because even like you take, again, education, for years we've known that the education system is not, does not fit what the future workforce needs. Uh, and we've been having trouble changing it, right? But now is the, the time when we can actually say, okay, it's already happening. This is that wake up call. It's happened now. So we're trying to pull everybody together to say, now's the time. We've got we to gotta seize the moment and really start to think, how are we going to revolutionize? It's a revolution that you need, right, to do this. How are you going to revolutionize uh, a lot of things that we have been used to, traditional systems and structures for this new, new beginning, this new norm? So, you know, as my children put it, I've got two teenagers at home, and they say, this is a reset button for the world. Right. Right? And... <laughs> Are we gonna are we gonna treat it as a reset or are we gonna treat it as okay this is a temporary thing and let's go back to how it was before this? Hopefully not, right? Hopefully not. No, and you're spot on. In <laughs> fact, I think the limitation that I thought educational institutions have was the brick and mortar, and suddenly this has made that change totally, right? So you can yeah. expand that classroom and it's being accepted by the human race. Right, which is pretty cool now because I think it will change the parameters of lots of higher educations, you know. But you know, there's a different thing with the with the with the longer the younger generation. But yeah, with the higher and the older generation, there's going to be a very very fascinating yeah. switch, and I can't wait to see how it develops because it is at its early stage. Now, thank you for that, Asif, sir. Now you had a plan, but cybersecurity and cyber attacks have increased significantly, right? How are you coping with that? What's the current plan or the new plan that you guys are putting in play? Yeah, so I think we all know the word called the black swan situation. So mm -hmm. you, may, you may think of all the risks, but you know, the one which you could never think of is the one which happens. And that's what it is. Like you have DR and BCP, it's like, it's a scenario, it's a situation, it's for a few days and it affects a certain thing and then you are back. But here it is like, we don't know what's happening and how long and when and everything has changed. So 
same thing uh, uh, what was happening in all the other sectors where things were getting digitized and you know uh, the 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 what you say finally the reset button was set uh, things had to drastically change in the way uh, it should be so that if there is a situation where you don't have any resources you don't have infrastructure you don't have uh, people can commute or transportation is affected or something whatever everything gets affected you still should be able to survive so you need to now look at all those factors and see how you can do your your work so same thing with like resources uh, do you want to have everybody sitting in office or you have people sitting all over the place do you want to have permanent employees or do you want to have contract services so that if you the person is sick you can get the other person or you can you have a backup where you can get a lot of people who can support you so so those kind of uh, thoughts are going in and we are trying to now break up security into different modules and the way it in and the way the providers are there which we can provide you an integrated solution where uh, when a person is in office or is somewhere else uh, he can be provided a secure access to what he needs to do his work so everybody doesn't need everything all the time you may need a certain thing to do something you may just need access to that and then when you do something else you need access to that so things and applications and all that now will be very modular and broken up so for example if you give somebody access to sap in the earlier days you give him access to everything he can do his payroll he can do his leave he can do something else he can apply for all that what that's not what it is if he wants to do pay slip or i want to apply for leave i just go into a leave module apply for leave and out i don't need access to anything else at all so now application development access and all that has to be now thought of is what the person needs and make it so small and it should be so simple and uh, uh, so reliant and resilient so that if that breaks nothing else breaks and uh, that's why in uh, in the whole of security you now you want to break up authentication you want to give him multi factor you want to give him access uh, from his personal device so we need to be able to check all that and then give him the appropriate level of authentication and access to what information he needs so uh, uh and then all these services have to be reliable and backed up by uh, what you call enough resources and people uh, so that if uh, it's not that you have one person looking after one service and one is sick you just can't do anything about it so, yeah so that's no. what it is changing the whole model of uh, security as like a managed service and you're absolutely right it is and and that just leads me to the next you know very natural question to sony you because yes you're right we can give people limited access so they can do their job the problem is when you have a workforce that's the size of a country and yes you've gone digital with it the next challenge is mm. to keep them keep the talent level up and the motivation level up how are you overcoming that how are you tackling that so again on this i have a very positive viewpoint Uh, the biggest challenge in any digital transformation exercise is changing culture yeah. making people adopt and adapt to the new way of doing things uh, not only your customers but also your staff sometimes the biggest resistance you face is internal rather than with your customers because your customers may be prepared to change they are seeing that change elsewhere but that change is not very visible to your internal staff to your internal customer the biggest uh, positive from the pandemic was that we did not have to convince people that you have to go digital that this is the new way of doing things that this is the only way you can do things because it was so evident to everyone that if you need to contact a customer to sell a product you can't deliver it in a branch the way you used to do it earlier because branches were just providing bare essential services not the full range you could not have uh, we could not provide the full range of services that we were doing earlier because of various restrictions from authorities on the number of staff who can come to a branch we also had exemptions of various categories of people whom we felt should not work because of issues around disabilities or around health or any other health conditions that they had
so when you are working from a remote location when you are working from home uh, the only way you could reach out to a customer was through digital means and if your digit if your customer was not migrated to a digital channel then you did not have a way in which you could sell your products and because of this uh, what we have seen is that the our staff our our people are onboarding customers on digital channels with a vengeance we uh, we they are trying to do uh, they are trying to see that every customer migrates as quickly as possible to a digital channel so that his uh, the fulfillment of his journey or his uh, requirements can be done digitally and this ex- uh, not this does not only uh, extend to say fund transfers or that sort of stuff but also anything that a customer needs because on uh, today in our digital channels uh, what we have built as a super app which provides everything it's not only financial but also anything that you need for your lifestyle requirements you want to shop you want to uh, uh, book something all that is possible you want to invest you want to insure everything is possible so this is i the biggest gain of this uh, the last 3 months is the sea change in the attitude of people that yes digital is the only way forward and as dr naya said are we going to return to the earlier situation i doubt it this is going to be the new normal and this is the way we are going to work perfect no that's 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 awesome i like the way this whole whole thing is tra- uh, transitioning fredrick your reflection on what you're hearing yes so it, it was a lot about the the work from home uh, situation or the new normal um I tend to think that people again hate change. Uh, some embrace change, but this is only five percent of the population, and nobody wants a new normal. Everybody wants to be back to normal, how it was before, good and nice, and going to a restaurant and enjoying life with friends. Nobody wants a new normal. But yes, we will have to adapt some uh, to some different circumstances, at least until we get a, a vaccine. Now, uh, for tech people. Um, it's not too much of a change there is indeed a change but there is a lot of people in tech who for the past 10 years probably have been working entirely remotely uh, i see some people in the uk it's impossible to live in london and work in london because you would spend uh, your time in the car basically commuting and not working so there's a lot of people uh, who live 2 hours away because it's also so expensive to live in london that they uh, they, they have been working from home for the past 10 years or 15 years So for for the tech industry uh, that's uh, that's a given for the banks yes this is a big discovery and and we have a uh, a certain number of large banks among our customers and they're discovering how to work from home uh with its advantages and its drawbacks it get, it brings gains but also losses of productivity uh so for example you will reduce the travel time which is good but uh and gives you more productivity on the other hand you have uh, an increased risk of security breaches and and then you you will create so new critical events and and you need you you can mitigate that with some critical event management software but you will increase these risks uh connectivity risks as well because uh people in your help desks your call center customer support well you need to get them to work from home and this is actually possible in in almost every industry as long as you don't have a a physical interaction with a machine or with a person which if you're a masseur uh is needed but if you're if you're a customer uh representative at the bank actually you don't need to see your customer you can you can interact with them remotely or your customer can interact with a computer actually when i choose a bank the first thing i'm looking at is how performing is uh, the it system and how can i do my internet banking so there's a, a lot of changes here I, i still think that we are going into a hybrid model where the share of remote working is uh increasing and therefore for that we need to have all the proper security procedures put in place uh bring your own device for uh the laptop or desktop or is mobile devices by containerizing applications between what's private 
and, and what's public uh, and what's professional. Uh, but also, uh, you know, equip people uh, to work from home, uh, from the company, providing them the right connectivity and making sure that this is done uh, with no disruption in communication. And this is done in uh, a proper security fashion. Yeah, no, thank you. That makes sense. And, and you're right. It is the hybrid model that I also see going forward. But what's really fascinating for me is being in Southeast Asia for the last decade, actually 12 years, I've been trying to preach that. But you know what? Culture eats all strategy for breakfast. Culture is was very hard to change. And we can strategize as much. You know, the whole hab the habitual habit of people saying, where's my staff? They got to be in front of the, me because that's the only time they work. They don't work from home. You know, so it's interesting. And you're right about productivity. You know, what I'm also seeing is, it's very different working from home when everything around you is completely shut. No malls were open, no shops were open, no movie theaters, nobody was going and visiting. It's a very different ball game when everything is open and you're still at home. So we haven't experienced that wave yet, you know, and I'm quite fascinated to see how that's going to react.